Hi and welcome to 3dmotive.com. In this tips and tricks tutorial we're going to go ahead and have a look at how to cut holes into objects that we're going to go ahead and smooth later on. So some of you might have had this issue before that you had your you just started out with your subdivision surface or your high poly mesh and you wanted to go ahead and cut a hole somewhere inside that surface and you didn't really know where to start off or what sort of geometry you need or how to cut a hole. So we're going to go through two different ways of creating a hole. Uh, one of them is a lower poly version or one that has a more jaggedy edge even though it's smoothed. And then we're going to go ahead and have a look at a bit more complicated way of doing it. But it will give you the control to control how smooth this cut is going to be. Now the slow poly version works perfectly fine and it's a lot faster to do than this one. So if you're further away from the mesh, it will go ahead and create just as a good result as the other one. But if you go ahead and you need to go ahead and create a hole where you're going to be able to go ahead and go up close to it and it needs to be smooth, then you are better off creating it with this way. Now some of you might say, well, surely I can just do it the easier way and instead of smoothing it with two divisions, I'll go ahead and just smooth it with three and it will go ahead and give me a perfectly smooth result. So let's go ahead and have a look at that. This is on Smooth Mesh Preview Division Level 2. So if I go ahead and press the Page Up key on my keyboard, it will go ahead and switch that to Division Level 3. And as you can see, it will go ahead and give us a very nice and smooth result. And there is not a problem with this at all unless you're working in a production environment or you need to actually pay attention to your poly count um, even though you're doing subdivision modeling. So let's just go ahead and compare these two objects when we go ahead and smooth these. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this one as well. And let's go ahead and apply the smooth mesh preview to this object with division level 3. And then go ahead and do the same thing on this one just to compare the poly count. Now on this one which is the low poly version on smoothed it's 173 faces and this one is 250 faces. So as you can see it's not that big of a deal difference until we go ahead and smooth these obviously. But let's go ahead and apply the smooth mesh preview to this one with subdivision level 3. Okay and as you can see this is 11,000 faces. Whereas if we go ahead and do the same thing with this one, this is only about 4,000 faces. So that is a massive reduction uh, over the poly count. And as you can see, this one is pretty crazy just to get a hole. And it will go ahead and subdivide the side of your cube that you really don't want. And this one is fairly clean. So let's go ahead and have a look at the two different techniques that I normally use to go ahead and cut a hole in. And the first one is very simple. So let's go ahead and treat this as our geometry. And this is just a simple cube with a couple of extra edge loops that will hold its shape. But you can imagine this being um, just a quad in your mesh. Okay, so when you think about cutting holes into your object that you already have, the main thing that you need to pay attention is that the place where you want to go ahead and cut your hole in is a quad. Now when you're doing high poly or sub D modeling, you should really try to stick to quads or maybe a couple of triangles on flat surfaces you can get away with. But for the most part you want to stick with quads because they're easy to predict of how they're going to smooth and so on so you shouldn't get any rendering issues. So let's go ahead and I'll just go ahead and duplicate this object and for example let's just say that we got all this mesh around us but we found a perfect quad where we need to cut our hole in. So the first thing that we go ahead and do is I select that face and then go to edit mesh extrude and scale this in. Now as you can see we'll go ahead and make a nice rectangle because we are quite lucky we are used we are with a cube but if for example this was a rectangle you would have to go ahead and do some adjustments to these edges to make sure that this stays as a rectangle and that's very important. So let's go ahead and smooth this and see what sort of result we're going to get. Now as you can see even though this is a rectangle it doesn't really smooth 
properly into a circle that we need until we go ahead and delete this face. Now that we deleted our face, as you can see, this will make a pretty nice circle for us and this should act quite nicely as our hole. So let's go ahead and add in the supporting edges here and finish off this hole. So I'm just going to go ahead and add in that edge and then hit G to go ahead and repeat extrude again at that supporting edge. Go ahead and drag this down. Let's go ahead and drag it down again to give us that supporting edge. Again extrude it in and let's go ahead and just snap these vertices together. So I'm just going to go to shift right click to vertices and then merge vertices, merge vertices to center and we can also go ahead and delete these edges. And as you can see, we are left with a quite a nice um, clean hole that we just created. Now, as you can see, we got that jaggedy edge that I told you about because it's going ahead and trying to smooth just the rectangle into a sphere, I mean a circle. So let's go ahead and have a look at how we can achieve a better result with a bit more work. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this cube again and again treat this that we found a perfect um, quad where I want to go ahead and cut my hole in, in my mesh and again the first thing that I'm going to go ahead and do is select that face and extrude it in so let's say I want my hole roughly this big so I'm just going to go ahead and extrude that and then delete this face so the first step is exactly the same as with the other one now that I got this place what I'm going to go ahead and do is basically create a different geometry that I can then go ahead and squeeze inside this place. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and create a pipe. Okay, bring up my attribute editor on my channel box with control A. And I'm going to go inside the inputs and we're going to go ahead and turn on subdivision axes to 8. And I normally always go with 8 because it gives us a very nice um, smoothing result even with division level 2. But you can go ahead and increase this to more if you wanted to. It will go ahead and make you a bit more work to do with topology wise. But it will give you an even smoother result if you really want to. But normally 8 works perfectly fine for me so I normally just go with 8 divisions. So once we created our cylinder, let's, or our pipe sorry. Let's go ahead and delete all these bottom faces. Now once we have this, all we need to do is basically turn these outer edges into a rectangle that we can then go and squeeze inside that. So let's go ahead and go into our top view and see how we're going to go ahead and do that. So the first thing that I'm going to go ahead and do is go into our vertex mode, select that vertex, select that axis by clicking on it and then hold down V on my keyboard to go ahead and snap it to this vertex with the middle mouse button. Then I'm going to go ahead and click on that axis, hold down V again and then middle mouse button drag onto that vertex. And as you can see we get a nice straight edge which is our perfect corner for our quad to squeeze into. Let's go ahead and do the same thing here and with our other two vertices on the other side. So as you can see it will go ahead and give us a very nice rectangle that we can squeeze into that cut that we created and we also get this nice hole that we can go ahead and adjust the scale off and so on. Normally I adjust the scale of this somewhere around here so it's close to that but not too close and then while this edge is still selected I'm just going to go ahead and hit extrude and scale this in to give us that supporting edge already for our hole. So once we have this all we need to do is really squeeze this inside that cut that we made earlier. So let's go ahead and move this guy and scale it into the place that we need it. Now the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do as you can see our pivot point is lower down and I want it exactly in the level of our plane. So let's go ahead and go to modify and then center pivot and this will give us the ability to move this plane really nice and flat on the top of this um, cube. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that Y axis and then go ahead and again holding down V middle mouse button onto a vertex on our cube and as you can see I will go ahead and snap it to be the exact level where we need it. 
Now once we have that, I'm just going to go into my top view, turn on wireframe on the shaded, press F on my keyboard to zoom in, and then I'm going to go ahead and scale this down, move it in place, maybe scale it up a little bit more so it's a better fit. So once you're at this stage, you can go ahead and like we did earlier, you can go ahead and select these two loops, and you can go ahead and scale them to make your hole smaller or bigger. Okay, so I'm going to roughly go with this size. And once our plane is placed exactly at the place where we need it to, I'm just going to go ahead and combine these two meshes. So let's go ahead and select this plane and shift select our cube as well. And once we have that, let's go ahead and go to Mesh, Combine, and then go to Edit and Delete All by Type History just to get rid of the history on these two objects. So now all we need to do really is merge these two vertices and combine these meshes into one. But as you notice, we got these two extra edges on the top and the sides. So let's go ahead and give extra topology for our cube where we can go ahead and merge these vertices. So let's go to Edit Mesh and use the Insert Edge Loop tool. And I'm going to go ahead and click on this edge. As you can see, it will give it add it in on a wonk, but that's not a problem at all. So while that edge is still selected, let's hit R on our keyboard to go into our scale mode and let's go ahead and scale this down. So keep scaling until it's perfectly straight. And once it is, I'm going to go ahead and select this Z axis. Hold down V on my keyboard and snap it to that vertex so these two lines perfectly line up. So let's go ahead and do the same thing now on the other side as well. Again, I'm just going to go ahead and scale this until it is straight. And once we have that, hit V on my keyboard, select that axis, and hold down V, middle mouse button onto that vertex, and as you can see, it will snap perfectly together. So now that everything is set up, all we really need to do is merge these vertices together. So let's go into our top view, and then go to Edit Mesh, Merge Vertex Tool, and let's go ahead and start snapping these vertices together. Okay, so really straightforward, nothing too complicated. Once all these guys are snapped together, we basically have our hole cut in. Let's go ahead and smooth this and see how it's looking. Okay, so as you can see, we got a perfect hole. It's really nice and smooth. We got a very clean and nice geometry all around it. So let's go ahead and finish off this hole, and I think we'll wrap up this tutorial right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and extrude it down to give us that extra supporting edge. Extrude down again. Extrude down again to give us the supporting edge there. Let's go ahead and extrude it again and scale it in to give us that supporting edge. And let's go ahead and scale this guy all the way in. Two vertices. Merge vertices to center. And if you notice, this moved down a little bit. So I'm just going to select that axis and snap it up to make sure that it's level. OK. And here we can do a bit of cleanup. So you can go ahead and delete a couple of these edges. OK. And that will give us a very nice clean geometry because these are now quads. We can go ahead and check that by going to selecting that object, go to Mesh, Clean Up, and make sure that you have Select Matching Polygons checked on and checked on faces with more than four sides and then hit Apply. And as you can see, nothing is selected which indicates that we don't have any endgons or any problems with our mesh and it should smooth perfectly well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and thanks for watching 3dmotive.com.